Hey everybody, welcome back. We are back on this L-head crack repair. We're getting ready to pressure test this morning and I have my block off plate on the uh, on the block here. And that's just that's just a piece of half inch steel. This one here is for an F head and basically it's got all the holes in it to bolt down but uh, all the coolant passages are, are blocked off. So uh, I just had these laser cut uh, an L and an F head because I do a lot of those so um, you know they're, they're, they're fairly flat. They're, they're not perfect and I didn't mill them perfect. They're only a half inch and uh, we just want to block off those coolant passages. Uh, it's not super, super critical. Uh, we do have a gasket in there. And we have a plate right here that I cut out. It blocks off the water pump. And obviously you got to have your core plugs in. These have never been out. We've got a fitting down here. It's just an air fitting. and you need some type of regulator so uh, you could do this with water you could fill the block with water and put air to it it's kind of messy uh, these bolts on on this to the plate here they're uh, they're torqued to 65 foot pounds uh, we want to introduce the same stress on the block that'll be there when the head gets bolted down uh, now I didn't put sealer on these uh, if you if you don't put sealer you're gonna get a little bit of air you know coming up through the threads it's not that critical we just want to have some air in here because we want to test we want to test this area here uh, that's our that's our most critical area so if we're getting a little bit of leakage around the bolts it's not a big deal uh, just remember when you put your head studs in I see a lot of guys put them in with a with anti-seize or something like that. Don't do that. You need sealer on every one of these bolts or you're going to get uh, coolant leaks up through. Um, so make sure you put sealer on there. I, I didn't do that uh, for this. But um, again, we just want to have a flow of air through there. We're going to put some uh, uh, soapy solution on there and, uh, and see if we have any air leaking through. Um... So let me get the uh, the airline hooked up, and uh, and we'll go after that area, and uh, and see if those pins fixed up the crack. Hang in there; I'll be right back with you. Okay, we are going to dial up some pressure here. Now you're going to hear some air leaking out of various places. Um, the uh, intake and exhaust manifold studs are leaking. Uh, I'm going to take that to 20 pounds of pressure uh, normally you're gonna run a seven pound cap on these engines so we're more than double the pressure we're gonna go over here try and get this zoomed in on that crack area Okay, I can feel on the other side we've got a, uh, a stud leaking that holds the intake and exhaust on. We should take a brush with some soapy solution and stick it on there. And see, we got nothing going on. We've got a nice solid repair there. And we had some pins going over in this area. Uh, we're going to get the whole area taken care of. And uh, that's all it really takes. You just got to make sure you've got no bubbles. Now if you look over here, we do have a couple bubbles. That's just because the plate on the gasket. That's not, uh, that's not a leak. We're, we're, we're interested in this crack right in here and this crack over here. And we've got nothing going on there. I will try and show you what a leak would look like. Hang in there.
I had to put a bolt in there because it were leaking air so bad, but obviously you can see that really making bubbles and, and blowing out. So when you put these studs in, if you start new, when you put these studs in, make sure you get sealer on all these because they go right into the cooling system. So if you had a leak, I mean, like I say, that one's excessive, but it'll be making bubbles and stuff like that. Uh, we have, like I say, 20 pounds in this. Don't go crazy and put 50 pounds in there or something. You don't want to damage the block. But, um, You could feel even some of these are leaking a little bit. Again, sealer is critical when you put your head down. Let me get you back in here again. So now that we know that we have a good solid repair there, and we'll check it a couple times, we'll keep checking that. We got no bubbles there. That is a good solid all metal repair and I feel good about boring this now um, so we're testing it now and then when I cut away some of those pins we're gonna put this plate back on and we're gonna test it again uh, because we're gonna take some of that out I just want to make sure everything is is still good so we'll bore it we'll test it again and then we'll bring it over and we'll do the final hone um, so there's not really any science to uh, uh, to pressure testing, you just got to have some of the tools. You got to have a regulator, you got to have a plate to block off the holes, uh, a gasket, the right size bolts, a, a water pump plate. You got to have a few different things, and you could do a successful pressure test at home. Uh, it's good on any block just to see if you got leaks anywhere. And like I said, you could fill it with water, put a little bit of uh, pressure behind it. Uh, I just use air, it just, it just works okay for me to just use air and um, that, that's the basic of a pressure test uh, we got to get this engine now on a stand get the boring bar out and we're gonna try and save this block at with a uh, 30 over pistons uh, this number one cylinder is really distorted um, we're over 20 thousandths on that number one cylinder Let me try and get you in there this this cylinder here this guy right here, uh, 20 thousandths piston at the top is sloppy and uh, it tightens up down the bottom, We're almost standard bore down the bottom and that's just how they wear, they wear tapered like that. But um, that's the one that's killing us here, It's uh, that's the one that's going to give us trouble. So we'll see if we can get a clean bore, uh, we'll stop maybe... Uh, two or three thousand shy and then we'll hone the rest out but we'll see if we can get this bore cleaned up at 30 and if the number one cleans up at 30 I can run right through and I know 30s are gonna work um, David is gonna get me the pistons for this and uh, I gotta give him the the size so we're gonna get this on a stand set up the boring bar start the boring and uh, hopefully it'll clean up in 30 but uh, I'll be back in a little bit and show you where we're at Okay, we're all set up with the boring bar, a number one cylinder, remember that's our biggest one, and I've got a light attached to the block there. There's the boring rig. There's our cutter. I am going to, we know we can't fit 20s in there, I'm going to try and bore this first one for 30, so... A 30 over piston would be 3 inch 155. I'm going 3 inch 152 right now with this first cut and we'll see if it cleans up the bore. Uh, that'll leave us approximately three maybe three and a half thousandths depends on the pistons when I measure them and uh, as you've seen me do before I hand fit each piston because um, even though they measure the same they don't they're not always exact so uh, I'm going to get close, and that way we can order the correct pistons. But uh, if this number one hole cleans up, um, then we can go ahead with the 30s. And we'll fire this up and, uh, and see how it does.
Okay guys, uh, there goes the first cut. It appears to be cutting all around. We'll make sure it cuts all the way down. Uh, the cylinder gets better as it gets toward the bottom, as usually the case. Now uh, we'll expand these cat's paws out when they get flush with the top here. Okay, we're just going to let that run most uh, <clears throat> all the way down there. Uh, most of the time, like I say, the bottom is still standard while the top can be 20 or 30 over. Uh, we're going to cut that nice and true and square to the top of the deck here. And uh, we'll just let it go and make sure we got a nice clean bore. And then we can move on to uh, the next hole. Okay, there is our 30 over rough bore. And if I come around, I'll try and keep the light in there. Okay, remember I was saying number one was the worst. And I think you can see we still have a pretty good shadow here. Um, <clears throat> now we're going to send the bore gauge down in there, see exactly where we're at. I believe we're going to be able to get that out with the final hone. But uh, let me just see how much material is actually left in there. Uh, I've got the uh, bore gauge set for three, three inch one fifty five, and like I say, that's uh, that might be our finished bore. I don't know until I get the pistons. But uh, let me just grab this. Try and do this one handed. Hang in there with me. Okay, if I could stay still. Oops. Okay, we've got just about three and a half thousand left to take out with the hone. Yeah, right around three and a half thousand. So, when I put it up here in our shadow area, got about two so I believe that will clean up with the hone this is what happens when an engine has miles on or it wears you know it's it's fine down the bottom and then it's uh, they get sloppy uh, you know up top here but um, since we have a shadow in that one I am going to bore the rest of them and make sure we don't have any hiccups in the other ones and uh, then we'll make a decision on 30 or 40s so I'm um, set up on number two right now we're gonna run the boring bar down through that one um, and see what we wind up with and then it's more of the same for three and four so I will meet you back when we have all the cylinders bored and uh, we'll see what kind of uh, bore we wind up with so this isn't great but like I say, I think we're going to be able to, uh, to hone that right out of there. So hang in there. I'll be right back with you. Okay, everybody. There is number four cylinder. And you can see all the pins are machined nicely. And that cylinder came out real good. But uh, let me walk around the other side here. Try and get the light in there for you. The number three cylinder is the one that really gave me trouble. I did not think number three was going to be as bad as number one. And we've still got a pretty good ridge here. Uh, the piston was just just slapping over there and really um, 
the oversized the bore. Um, number two, it's not too bad. Number one, like I showed you before, that's still a little messed up. I went a little bigger on number three. Uh, right now I left a um, thousandths and a half for honing and we're never going to get that out in a thousandths and a half. So, uh, even a little tiny lip on number four there. So, uh, I know you're probably watching this, Dave. If you are watching it, I do have to uh, bore it out to the next size. So, uh, it's going to be a 40 over piston for sure. I am 100% certain we can get it in 40. I was hoping to get it in 30 for you, but uh, it just isn't going to happen. So, uh, if you can, order the 40 overs and ship them in to me. I will measure them and hand fit them. Uh, we're going to call it quits right here for now until I have the pistons. I, I just want to make sure different piston manufacturers sometimes make things a little different. Um, so shoot those pistons to me as fast as you can. I will bore everything again and then stick it on a honing machine and uh, you'll be all set. So 40 over pistons where we're going to be, Dave. Okay, uh, that's all we're going to uh, do on this guy today. So, uh, as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys on the next video.